Hello, YouTube. Once again, we're taking a look at the HP Thin Client that we uh, took a look at over six months ago. This uh, little thing here has been running for six months, 24-7, and hasn't given me a single hiccup. It's really a nice little uh, machine that I use to run my Ventrilo server on and some other Linux little things. I've uh, been running it 24-7, like I said, for all those months. And uh, I think it is time for a follow-up video and uh, do some other fun stuff with it. So basically all of the data that was on the machine uh, is stored on this flash drive. This has the copy of Ubuntu Server 14.04 on it, which is of course the LTS release. And uh, it's been running just fine. Now there's a different copy of a different operating system uh, on this flash drive right here. and. Uh, something else because we can't really do much with the internal storage with it only being a 2 gigabytes IDE flash module. Uh, we're gonna try something uh, along uh, these lines. An external USB 2 SSD. I almost feel like Drawaga 1 now. <laughs> Except that I s I'm a noob at this kind of stuff now. He's just the weed master. He is 420 times better than me, anyways. Um, so we're gonna try something with this SSD right here. Uh, this has Windows 7 on it. So we're gonna try and see if we can put Windows 7 on the SSD. What I don't know is whether we can actually boot from the USB drive to install Windows, as well as boot from a external boot SSD. I know we can boot from one at a time, and I'm not sure if we can actually use both at the same time and actually uh, choose which one we want to use. So that's what we're going to find out. Uh, if we cannot do both the flash drive and the SSD, then that's fine as well. We'll just install over the network, like I've been doing for a long time now. And a couple of videos, actually. Uh, so if that has to be done, then we'll actually do that. No biggie. I mean, we could even install Windows XP embedded if you wanted to, or something like that. That would have run on this machine. But... Uh, in case you uh, have been wondering, the purpose of this video is to see if we can use this HP Thin Client as a desktop computer, yes or no. So this is all we're basically going to need, an external SSD and this flash drive. So uh, yeah, um, I'm currently finishing up uh, installing High Sierra on the Mac Mini server, which is going to be sold. And uh, as soon as I'm done with that, we're going to take a look at this guy. All right, one ghetto setup, check. And let's actually plug in the darn thing. Come on, go in. Jesus. All right, it's gonna power up now. I'm not sure if we'll actually be able to get into the BIOS or whatever. It is booting straight from the flash drive, so that's good. But what I want is actually go into BIOS, see if there's something we can configure. It doesn't appear that we can today. Uh, I think it's just escape, really. Oh, Jesus Christ, come on. I'm pretty sure it says press delete to enter setup, but it's just not doing that. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's F10. Okay, it's F10. Now we know. Now we know. Alright, come on. Uh, no, I don't want to exit. Okay, so we have the Sempron 2100 Plus. One gigabyte of memory, two gigabytes of flash storage. Okay. First boot device is USB. Yeah, like that makes a difference. Doesn't seem like you can actually set anything. 
Let's give ourselves a post delay of five seconds so we can actually see anything. We'll enable integrated audio because we're going to be trying to use it as a desktop. Uh, yep, we got all the USB ports enabled. Okay. Seems that that's everything we can do. We can't actually mark certain USB devices as a boot device individually. So, well, that may not be an issue at all though, but uh, we'll see. See, now we can actually see the boot logo, just for a little while. And now it's loading files. And the next thing we want to know is whether Windows 7 will actually support the USB 2 controller so we can actually install to USB. Because I'm not even sure whether that's at all possible, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I know you can do it on XP. That, that just sees another drive. It doesn't matter to which controller it's actually connected. Uh, so we'll see uh, what Windows 7 thinks of it. It should be pretty darn slow though, because it's Windows 7 on a 1 GHz uh, Intel, or Intel, AMD Sempron with a gig of RAM. So if we can, we'll just try Windows 7 Starter for this. Let's see if we can actually manage to do that. We'll also find out whether this thing actually has somewhat usable graphics. Which I highly doubt, but, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a thing line from 2009, you'd expect it to at least support uh, DirectX 9 compatibility mode for uh, running Windows Aero. But, uh, yeah. Let's actually not bore you guys with another installation process uh, at slow speed. Let's just uh, speed this up a little bit. Well, that was short-lived. It is, in fact, detecting that it's running on USB. So Windows 7 will not let us install on that. That's okay. Let's uh, try something else then. All right, no idea if this is going to work. I put XP on a flash drive. So let's see if that's going to boot. This is supposed to be POS Ready 2009. I got it from a very shady source, so we'll see if it even boots. So far the answer is yes. But of course, there is no guarantee. And then again, I'm pretty sure that this will not fit on that 2 gig uh, internal flash card if it ever comes to that, that we can't use the SSD. So, yeah. We're about to find out. I've personally never done this anyway, so. So, this could get interesting. Windows XP. Copyright Microshafted Edition. Press any key for a command prompt. I'm not feeling like prompting for commands. Ah, there we go. Windows Embedded POS Ready. Piece of shit ready 2009. Alright. Let's go through the setup. Um, yeah, let's actually do interactive. Uh, and we need a serial, of course. I'm gonna put it in and I'll be right back. Alright, I accepted the serial number, that's good. Next. Name, that would be me. Don't have any other drivers for this machine, so we'll just do it like this. All right. It's kind of like the Vista install, if you know what I mean, just with this drive set up here. 
Um, yeah, that's all right. Yes, erase, please. All right. Default. SSD. Quick format, please. Will XP actually let us install on the USB R drive? That's just simply not care. Looks that way. Okay, let's go to Dutch. Same store story there. That's about it. Geographical location would be the Netherlands, uh, Amsterdam, Dutch, everything. Um, yeah, let's do a typical install. Computer name. HP Thin Client, because I keep forgetting the freaking model number because it's huge. Uh, let's put in a password. Let's see if it'll actually allow me to use my regular password. For testing purposes, that is. Nope, it has to be a strong one. I'll put some very strong language in there. There we go. Um, yeah, it can do DHCP, workgroup, yup, I don't want it to hook up to the domain quite yet. Well, I might actually do that, to be honest. Or should we? No, we shouldn't. It's really annoying. We're going to use it as a desktop, not as a networked client. We could do it anyway, but mm, that should be something for a different video, I guess. To really show how a thin client is supposed to be used. But uh, this is an XP professional flavor, well, XP embedded, but it's essentially professional, just a bit lighter. Made for a special hardware like this. I mean, a gigabyte of memory is still pretty, uh, pretty good, I guess, for a thin client. Well, these days, thin clients aren't really all that thin anymore. I mean, a while ago at work, we shipped out like uh, I think one or two new HP thin clients with like eight gigabytes of RAM and like quad core CPU. It's mostly AMD stuff on the thin client level, and that was just complete overkill. I think even had Radeon graphics and, uh, and stuff like that. So you could probably actually use that as your daily work machine, just for a typical office and web browsing and whatnot. It's only used for people to run. Uh, a connection to a terminal server, or well, remote desktop services it's called these days. But uh, yeah. Is it actually focusing well enough? Eh, not really. That's completely out of focus. Setup will restart the computer. Oh dear. I guess once it turns off, I'll actually have to pull the plug and make it boot from the SSD. Because I'm pretty sure that if we try to boot it from the USB stick, we're not going to be happy at all. I'm pretty sure this works. It does not. Okay. We've learned that. All right, so we actually ran into the roadblock that I was sort of expecting. Um, we cannot install on an external USB drive because it can't differentiate uh, what it actually has to boot from. And it's not really installing the master boot record properly, so we can't actually boot from it. Um, instead of messing about and trying to get it to work anyway, I don't really have time for that, we're just going to install straight to the uh, disk on module or the IDE SSD that's already in the machine itself. Now, this may mean that I can no longer boot my Ubuntu server. I don't care too much about that. I can always reinstall that. But, uh, yeah. Let's actually install on the disk in, on module instead. No system disk was found. This is the system disk. Make it work. Damn it. Yes, this one. No system disk was found. Well then. Now what do you want me to do? Ah, crap. 
crap. It's probably not formatted properly. So we actually have to clean the disk itself first. Because apparently we're not allowed to use it as a system disk. In its current state at least. So we'll have to go through all of the misery once more. There we go. Disk part. I guess uh, you can probably tell that I've never actually had to use this part before. Which is my way of saying that I've had to use it way too often. In my job, actually. So Let's get a list of what's in here. List disk. We have one disk. It has no free bytes. Select disk 1. Clean. List disk. Free 1953 megabytes. There we go. Now it's usable. At least it should be. It's not GPT, it's not a dynamic disk, so now it should be good. Let's close. And it's actually going to reboot again. Oh, great. Yup, it was indeed a partition error, so that's good. I'm gonna call this DOM. I'm gonna prepare a quick format or perform it. And see how that goes. Gonna change this again. Nope, I'm not in Belgium. Close though. Uh, let's see. And let's see, Amsterdam right there. Typical. Wait, what? What happened? When we were trying to install it to the SSD, the typical size was about 700 megs, and now it's freaking over 2 gigs. How does that work? Uh, notepad. I want paint. I definitely want paint. I want a calculator. Oh yeah, keep a calculator. Uh, word pad. Yeah, I can do with that word pad. Hmm. I want CMD. I'll install drivers myself. That's not a problem. Indexing service. That actually takes 14 megabytes. Wow. Okay, let's, let's not do that. Don't need monitoring. Yeah, let's do networking, actually. I might actually need that. Um, yeah, it's a thin client, so it's actually supposed to run terminal services. Touch screen keyboard, no. Root certificates, yes please. Windows Media. Media player takes up about 30 megs. Or 30 for actually supporting it. Okay. Drivers, actually, barely anything. That's good to know. Okay, next. Paging file size. Bro, that doesn't even fit. Let's do 512 to... I don't freaking know, 256 to 512? Is that gonna work? Jesus, let's just let, let the system manage it. See, it's too small. Oh, what do you want me to do then? Jesus Christ. Let's skip the page file altogether. Let's live dangerously. HP thin 5730W. Yeah. Put in the password again. Jesus. There we go. Password. Fuck all that shit. Install. Yeah, let's see if this is gonna work. I'm gonna bet your ass it won't. Well, plan C. 
installing a very different version of Windows XP. This is actually Micro XP version 0.82, which is a Windows XP build from 2008. This can only go right, right? Starting Windows. I know a lot of cups of Windows XP that either hang right here or completely blue screen. And there we are. Took a little while. Let's delete that partition, create a new one, and give that a whirl. The ISO is less than 200 megabytes, so. I'm assuming we can fit this on the discon module in the thin client, no problem. We're about to find out. It is detected as being Windows XP Service Pack 3, so that's pretty good, I guess. Pretty sure we can't update, because quite frankly most of the operating system will be missing. But, um, you know, we're gonna find out. At least at some point in this video, which is going to be very long. This is going nice and fast. I know that uh, now that I created this boot disk using Win Setup from USB, I will actually have to keep the USB in in there for the next boot, and I should be able to pull it after the uh, second part of setup is done. So hopefully that is true. P3.sys, processor.sys, yeah, we'll definitely need a processor DLL, that's for sure. Shell32, I'm seeing, that's good. You know, if this copy doesn't work, I have some, some other copy uh, laying around, or at least it's uh, finishing up from uh, uTorrent right here. It's not a modified, modified, modified copy of XP Pro. There we go. Just uh, taking a look through there. It's also a Micro XP Pro. It has Windows Media Player 11, Internet Explorer 8, DirectX 9C, Intel AMD and S Media drivers, USB 3 drivers even. And this thing is from 2011, 2013. Okay. So that's a bit newer. I guess if this doesn't actually work out, we uh, we can go that route. But for now, I just want to see if we can actually get this running. Because quite frankly, I'm sort of losing hope here. Because it's really putting up a fight. I mean, the W in the model number of this thing client, it's, it's actually a T5730W. Now I actually remember the, the model number. It actually indicates that this this thing was at once uh, shipped with a Windows embedded version of it or on it in some uh, flavor. I guess we'll never know what that was exactly. Just like I'm not quite sure why it's actually sort of refusing to boot right now. I guess I'll start preparing another flash drive. As you can hear in the background. Hmm. I need to threaten more often. It actually makes things work. Who would have thought? Alright, I'm just gonna unpack that thing anyway. Micro XP by experience. Well, we're about to have an experience, that's for sure. It's not a very fast experience, though. Is it? <laughs> Alright. Meanwhile, I'm just prepping another USB flash drive in case this goes horribly wrong. And TFS, yeah, thank you. Please wait. Well, I'm gonna do the waiting, you can do the watching. 
I decided to put in the other image anyway. You know, the one that I mentioned uh, before. With Service Pack 3 and IE8 and all the good stuff. Turns out that that micro XP wasn't really that good of an idea in the end. <laughs> because our goal is to get a fully operational desktop operating system and not one that's just sort of broken because it had to be compromised in such a way that it's not really all that usable. You actually have to run a couple of different programs or to even install a driver. I want an operating system with at least full desktop functionality and not just something that's completely sh basically brought to shit so it could actually fit on the uh, smaller hard drive. I think two gigs is enough uh, wiggle room so we're gonna give this one a shot. I'm assuming this is fully unattended just like uh, micro XP um, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, this has been this video has been going on forever But I'm not going to stop until we have a desktop operating system on this think line, so I'm not going to stop right here. I am going to stop filming right here though, and I'm going to pick this up in the morning when we can actually uh, see a little bit better what's going on. Uh, this has been going on for long enough, I'm just going to let it run its course, and uh, once it's up and running we'll uh, pick up the recording. I think that's a good idea for all of us. It is now the next day, and as you can see Everything is up and running on Windows XP. We're even running full resolution right now with the Royale theme. Let's actually bring the resolution down a bit. Uh, what's a good one? They're all shit, really. Uh, let's try this then. Whoa. That's ultra wide before that was even a thing. Um, let's try this one. Nope, that's still pretty crap. Maybe it's just a scaler in this thing that's kind of shit. Uh, let's see, 1024 by 768. Does that work? Yeah, that works great. Now you can actually see what I'm doing. Right, so this is the machine. In terms of hardware, what we've got here is uh, the Sempron, as you can see here. It's a mobile Sempron 2100 Plus. You may remember that when I got this thing, it actually had a Turion X2, which is still possible to put in here, but this is a 1 gigahertz single core processor with 1 gigabyte of RAM. So there's that. We have integrated uh, Gigabit LAN by Broadcom. We have Realtek HD audio, so it's still, it's pretty good up to date. Let's actually take a look at CPU Z here, so we can get some more insight. This is the socket S1, of course. That's the uh, main socket that I used. This is a 64-bit capable CPU. We have 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. 800 megahertz hypertransport bus. The motherboard here, Hewlett Packard. Chipset is an ATI RS690M. It's actually an ATI chipset. BIOS 2009. There's an update for that, but I don't really care. We have 400 megahertz single channel DDR2. Excellent. And uh, my battery's about to die. So let's take it from there. So now we can take a look at the meat and potatoes here. The ATI Radeon X1200 series. It's actually an X1250, which is the integrated graphics for this uh, chipset here. I won't run this benchmark, I think, because it's going to be appalling. Really appalling. So let's skip that. I'm actually not sure how much memory this chipset is using. So let's see if we can find out. Apparently 32 megabytes. Doesn't say if it's shared. I am assuming it is shared because it's integrated graphics. And it would make sense as we are we have 1024 installed and it's showing 996, 992. Yeah, that's actually correct. Yay, math! Anyway. So overall the system is very, very snappy. It's only one gigahertz CPU, but you really don't notice that. Of course, it's not designed to be run uh, using, or to actually be run as a desktop. But the thing is, it is of course an SSD, and you can really notice it. I mean, just see these Office 2007 applications that just jump open like it's nothing. I don't have any accounts yet. Uh, yeah, skip. Thank you. Also, can go on the web. 
using Mozilla Firefox. This is the ESR version, so it's still sort of up-to-date-ish. I haven't actually tried this yet, so this might be funny. Of course, you could imagine single-core AMD Sempron at 1 gigahertz wouldn't be extremely quick. But I've seen Pentium 4s that load this uh, slower, so yeah. Yeah, when you actually try to load some other stuff on the bottom there, it's not really going to do much. Let's uh, look for some uh, LGR today. So let's go there. It's finally caught up with my typing. I really shouldn't have tried to scroll down. Alright, I already watched this one, but that's fine. Well... I see people are putting up Christmas trees, so that means... Let's go Ooh, that's quite appalling. I guess. Sun quality is good, though. A reason? Dude, I said stop. So don't actually continue. No. No. Stop. Close ad. So 480p now. Let's go down to 360p full screen. I'll try that again. Up today is a Goodwill that I haven't been to in a while, and that is the Goodwill Outlet Center. And in case you don't know, well, this is almost watchable. Sort of dump a whole bunch of crap into big blue bins, stuff that has been rejected and unsold and whatnot. I'm moving a mouse. I mean, region, all sorts of things in here, mostly crap. There's no response anymore. It's completely frozen. Back half of a scrap metal box, or somebody's collection of self-recorded mixtapes. Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes I like looking through these just to see what So yeah, <laughs> YouTube is definitely out of the question here. <laughs> well, that was to be expected anyway. One thing that I do want to check out is uh, how fast this uh, chip is actually running. Let's see, we're dealing with 2GB ATA flash disk, completely generic. There we go. It, it supports ATA 66 mode, but it's running in ATA 33 mode, so it's basically running like an optical drive would on an IDE bus. So that's not too amazing. So that would indicate that if we were to run a benchmark test here, we should end up somewhere, we should top out around that 33 mark in terms of megabytes per second. So let's see what it does. Well, it seems we're not even going to get close to that. That's okay. It seems very constant, around 19 megabytes per second. But of course, it's the access times in SSDs that makes them very quick. And that definitely shows. Yeah, that's going to take a while. I really don't want to uh, go through all that. So we get about 20 megabyte per second transfer rate, which is fairly low, but the thing is, like I showed you, I mean, just opening programs, boom, it's just instant, really. We also just browse through Windows, it's all very nice and fast. It's remarkable how quick this machine really feels, considering it's only using an ATA33 bus that only can, and an SSD that only does 20 megabytes per second, so. What? Have been changed or moved. Wait, what? I just installed that. Where did it go? Madonion.com to be marked another one as E. That's right there. Jeez. Because that's the one thing that I still want to try. Can you probably, or can you even use this machine, aside from just regular desktop tasks, can you actually use it for some retro gaming? 
And 3D Mark 2001 is pretty much the benchmark to uh, prove or disprove that. And uh, let's give it a whirl. All well, default settings, just like everyone else does. And uh, we can get a feel for uh, how this machine would perform if it were used for gaming. Because it's a 1 GHz CPU, it has pretty okay graphics. Well, it's integrated graphics from like 2004. But, uh, well, 2007 actually. So it's probably, you know, somewhere along the lines of an early 2001 2002 gaming PC. You could probably compare it to like a, a fast Pentium 3. And the graphics are basically going to be on the level of, I, I would assume, something like a GeForce 2. But uh, we'll see how that goes. So far it seems to be running okay. Uh, I'm going to let this uh, do the benchmark. It's running pretty poorly right now. And uh, we'll take a look at the score and uh, we can do a wrap up. Alright, the test has been run and uh, like I said, it's somewhere, it's, it's actually in GeForce 2 territory. This is somewhere between the GeForce 2 MX400 and the GeForce 2 GTS. So that's actually not too bad. So that would put this at, you know, pretty much like a 2001 uh, typical gaming computer, except this one is completely silent, it is completely passively cooled, and can be picked up for next to nothing. And, uh, it comes with an SSD as standard, yay! And you can just, you know, hook up a USB hard drive and put all your games on that and run it, and uh, it should be good. The only downside would be the software, because quite frankly, uh, yeah, we're running Windows XP, so that might uh, hamper your performance in some departments. Um, you can't really do DOS, for instance. Although I would imagine that you could probably uh, get DOS working. You could probably just install this DOS on this thing and run your uh, DOS games that way. But, uh, you know, that might be something for another video. For this video, I'm gonna wrap up right here. So, the question that I set out at the beginning of the video whether you could actually turn one of these into a desktop computer, the answer is absolutely yes. You can browse the web, you can't really do YouTube or anything, but you know, browsing websites is just fine. You can do your word processing, you can do some uh, retro gaming if you want to, that uh, is from games that are around 2001 and older. And you can definitely do that as well, so overall it's pretty nice. So if you have any other suggestions of things that we could do with this machine, aside from installing DOS, and even if you want to see me install DOS and try to run DOS games on this, uh, do leave a comment uh, stating that you want that. And I'm also uh, looking for other suggestions of things we could do with this, just to have some more fun. And uh, I'll be looking forward to those. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.